So how have you been? It feels like a long time since we've seen you. It's been a minute, yeah. Uh, COVID, new baby, and three surgeries later, I'm uh, back back to normal training, <laughs> uh, letting this finger heal up. So hopefully we can get in there soon and uh, defend the title. So that's what I want to ask you. Definitely want to ask about the injury. Was it if it was a finger or your hand or both or what? Yeah. So it uh, originally I thought it was hand issues, but it was um, my index finger knuckle. And um, I had three different surgeries on it. So that was a, a pain in the butt, but um, it's healing up great now. Um, I threw a punch against the mitt for the first time in like six months or something like that last month. So that was great. Um, so it feels good to kind of get somewhat back in the flow of uh, back to regular training and hitting and sparring and all that good stuff so it's uh it's been a little crazy and a little hectic but um you know appreciative uh, and, and grateful for for the way it turned out and, and now that I'm back to almost normal so do you feel like this maybe happened at I don't want to say the I mean the right time I guess because because of COVID there's not really a lot of fights happening especially with um Singapore so maybe maybe it's a good time for this to happen because you're not making people wait necessarily yeah yeah, to be honest with you, uh, it kind of worked out pretty well. Um, you know, obviously I wouldn't have chosen to have three surgeries in a row, but it came at a good time uh, with the newborn, with COVID situation, not being able to travel and all the restrictions and everything. I guess it played out pretty well. Yeah, I can't complain. <laughs> Is this your first child? It's my second. Okay, so I was going to ask about the um the dad power that there's like a lot of people lately have been having kids and they've been having these crazy performances um but you already have one so i guess maybe that explains your crazy performances <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe we'll blame it on uh, my first i like it <laughs> yeah um so i actually i've noticed a lot of of the one fighters are having children right now christian lee just had one angela lee just had one um do you think Part of that has to do with the fact that you guys aren't training. Like it's a good time to have kids. Um, so yeah, I guess you're training, that's, uh, fighting your training, but right, right. I was going to say, uh, my training schedule really hasn't changed much, but, um, not being able to fight, um, kind of played out well, you know, with all these quarantine babies popping out, it's, uh, it kind of worked out, you know, I guess how, how we guess it would, right. Like if you asked me before everything went down, um, if I would expect a, a, a rise in, in newborns and in, in our guys, I'd say, yeah, but uh, I guess that's how it played out. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I just talked to Gary Tonin, um, I believe yesterday, and he seems to think that you guys might be fighting by the end of this year. Is that anything that you can confirm? Is that a fight you want? Um, nothing that I can confirm. It definitely a fight that I want. Um, I guess I haven't talked to or spoken to, uh, anybody at one yet about it but um yeah like obviously he's definitely in the top five he just beat Matsushima he's definitely going to be somebody that's on the hit list um obviously you know he's he's got that one fight against uh, a top five guy and the rest of his opponents have kind of their records are kind of hovered around 500 so not um super spectacular performances with the rank guys and kind of a I guess subpar opponent uh list for him but uh i'm sure he's definitely going to be on the list if not next then very very soon um in my opinion maybe he gets another fight and kind of earns a title shot but um obviously we work for a company so depending on uh how that works and how the boss says we'll uh we'll talk about it and see what we what we want to do but yeah it was it's he's a he's a big name obviously on the list uh rematch with martin was always an option there i thought that was going to happen so who knows as soon as um i can start talking dates and um you know camp and all that good stuff as soon as i can they'll hear from me or yeah. i'll hear from them so is there a date it sounds like you're not quite ready to say you're you're back yet so is there a date that you're looking at um definitely want to fight before the end of the year no question there um i'd you know, I'd, I'd like it to be at the beginning of, of the last quarter. So we're looking, you know, maybe September, October. I don't know. I'm just throwing out dates here. Don't quote me, but um, definitely, definitely before the end of the year, 
um, and shit, we might be able to sneak in too. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd like to, to get active. So as soon as this heals up, I'm, I'm back on uh, fighting multiple times a year, like normal and, and trying to defend this belt and trying to knock everybody out. And in a perfect world that you could name your next opponent, who do you want? Um, I think I've said this before in, in a couple of interviews, I think in, in a perfect world um, and I get to just hand pick, I'd like to uh, defend the title against Martin, either that or go up and fight Christian for the lightweight belt. Uh, one of those two first and then the other next. And then uh, Gary would be third on that list, I think would be uh, ideal. I think um, defending it first makes makes sense. I get that. Um, so whichever order it plays out, I think it makes the most sense as well. Um, and maybe that'll give Gary a, um, a chance to get another fight and maybe get a finish and, you know, against a top five guy and get a good performance there. And you mentioned too your desire. I think a lot of one fighters have, have voiced this um, doing a cross promotion with UFC, finding their champion. Um, you know, Rich hinted that that could be something I mean, I know that one has been vocal about wanting to do that. Do you think that that's, is that number one, is that something you, it's still in your mind? And do you think that that's realistic? Yeah, I, um, I, that's at the top of my list. If everything goes to the side, if that's an option, right. Um, because of the level of competition, because of who those guys are and think they are. Um, and you know, for the fans, I think it's a, a, a crazy, crazy e event that could be put on. Um, so that's big, but you know, I, uh, I don't think it's super realistic because the UFC sees themselves at the top of that heap. So if you're at the top of the list, as far as competition goes, you don't want to go down in their eyes. Right. So, um, I t I've, I've been quoted saying this, that we should do it without, them. let's do, you know, uh, risen PFL Bellator, like put everybody in this huge tournament type of uh, like Grand Prix-ish situation, fight it out, see who the, who the best, in my case, featherweight on the planet is, see who the best at each weight class is. And then that's fine. I'm If I win, if I happen to come out on top, that's it. I'm the best featherweight on the planet. Oh, wait, the UFC guys won't allow that talk to happen. So come on, let's, let's step into the cage and let's try it out. Like that's it's the only reason I got into this sport is to fight the best dudes and go against the best competition. And they, those guys over there obviously think they're the best in the world. And so do we, so let's, let's battle it out. That's why we fight. Right. So uh, to see who, who's going to come out on top. And I think that'll be a ridiculous event. I think it would be uh, great for the fans, great for the sport. Um, I think it only makes sense for the sport of MMA to kind of go in that direction. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. I, I don't think I've heard anybody suggest that where it's all the different promotions. I can just see like fans heads blowing right off if that was ever announced. Cause that would be crazy. Yeah. I think um, it's, it's a great way to entice the quote unquote top dogs to kind of come down. If, if you think you're at the top and there's all this media talk about, well, let's say I come out on top that I'm the best featherweight on the planet that has ever existed. Cause I fought all the champions and blah, blah, blah. Then they wouldn't let that stand. They, come down and put their foot down and show, show us what they have. And that's what we're looking for. So I think it would work out great if, uh, if that's how it played out. Do you think there's any bit, um, I mean, obviously you mentioned the fact that the UFC believes they're the top and a lot of people believe they're the top. Um, but do you think that there's any percentage of maybe fear for them to put themselves on the line like that? Because we've seen what happened to, you know, DJ when he came over and Sage when he came over and Eddie when he came over is, do you think that there is a little bit of them? Like, we don't, we think we're the best. We can prove we're the best. We don't want to put that on the line because what happens if we turn out to not be the best? One million percent. Absolutely. Um, like I said, they think they're at the top, then that's all risk from you. And, you know, besides the money factor, which is pretty much the driving factor for everything nowadays, but all risk, no reward, right? Like, uh, you thought you were the best, you beat Ton. So now you're still the best. There's not a ton of reward besides the money factor, which I think that's going to be the biggest thing to, to drive this, obviously. Because um, if you can make a, uh, you know, YouTuber versus a previous 
established boxer or whatever, a, a million buy event. You can do that with two current champions that, that you think are the best in the world, especially if one just won a tournament that basically said he was the best, right? So I, I think it's an easy sell. Um, but yeah, I think they see it as all risk, no reward. But besides the business side of things, it's we're in a sport. We're trying to see who is the best. Like, I understand why the company might not take that risk immediately, but you know, Volkanovski should be jumping you know, at the bit to be able to compete. Obviously, he's got a great division to go through. Plenty of competition there. Great guys. You know, I'm not downing that side of it. It's just you've got other champs that also think they're the best in the world and have put on some pretty, uh, pretty good performances. And, you, you know, you've got Pitbull that's known as pound for pound best in Bellator. Uh, Lance Palmer is an awesome, awesome fighter uh, that I got to know on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, myself 100 percent finish rate you know trying to knock everybody out and then Volkanovski who's obviously done really well himself so it's a that's a nice little group of guys that could really beat the hell out of each other and put on some some really good shows and make a lot of money for us and the promotions and put on excellent shows for the fans yeah I mean that's I, I my brain would blow out out of my head um you mentioned tough and that's obviously airing um, now. I'm curious what if you can kind of tell us like some of your memories from Tough. I'm, I mean, I'm excited to kind of uh, check this one out, obviously, because uh, Volkanovski is one of the coaches. Ortega is the other. And uh, if things shake out, you know, maybe we go against one of those guys. So it's always the, cool to kind of see how they act and, you know, what's in their head as far as coaching and competing and how they approach things. So that from a competitor standpoint, it's really cool. I'm definitely going to be tuning in. Um, but man, the ultimate fighter was a lot of fun looking back during probably in my brain, wasn't the best time of my life because, you know, you're cut off from the outside world. You're, you know, you're not with family and family's huge, you know, with me, um, you know, music, good phone, you know, whatever, any social media, all that stuff. Um, it's crazy how uh, getting that cut off kind of changes your, your mood, your, the way you operate day to day. But I've uh, met some really good people on the show uh, from the producers all the way down to other competitors. Like it's, it's been great. Uh, I've made a lifelong friend and training partner in Ryan Hall who won the show. Um, and, you know, I train, I'm actually heading out there next week. Uh, we train together on a regular basis. Um, some, you know, other guys, obviously, like Billy Quintella doing really well, uh, Chris Gritzenmacher, uh, Juicy J, like all these guys have, uh, you know, it's cool to kind of see them, see them progress through their careers, uh, make awesome relationships and friendships. Uh, and it, it's been really cool. Uh, the show, I wouldn't take that back for anything. It was a great experience. And it was my first experience uh, against like genuine high level competitors, like UFC guys and UFC coaches and that was my first experience doing that type of thing and that was really weird because I you know I thought I was good I had confidence in myself and I feel like I did the right things as, as best as I knew how at the time and then you go and get in the cage with some of these guys even in training on your own team like no it's awesome to be able to move in front of these guys and, and understand that you belong at least belong you know. Yeah, I, um, I'm kind of new to MMA, and so I had never watched Tough before this season or live. You know, I've gone back and watched, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. Like some of the, the things I, uh, I don't think I can handle would be like being eliminated, but staying in the house, like having to watch. That's a, that's a crazy concept to me. It is. It is. And I guess um, like from the competitor side, like my side of things, when that happens, you're like, okay is this kind of pointless, but it really isn't because you're experiencing going through fight camps with these guys, learning from the coaches, learning from how other teammates are uh, dealing with adversity and this and that. So it's, if you try to make everything a learning experience, you really can learn from everything. It's just, you know, sitting in the house and not being connected to your family for the extra weeks that you don't quote unquote have to, you know, is kind of a pain in the ass, but um the the UFC obviously the producers the whole show situation they take care of you they make it a very pleasant experience so I'm not definitely not bitching about that that's awesome um my last question for you I spoke to Rich a couple weeks ago and he mentioned he was in the United States um uh, scouting a location for a U.S. show and I know I think the last time we talked we talked about that possibly happening sometime that was before COVID 
So it seems like maybe it is going to happen now or, or it's getting closer. Is that anything that you are interested in? Is that something that, um, that you may, I don't want to say demand, but like, if that happens, are you like, I want to be on this card, this first card, or is it sort of like, if it happens, it happens. Um, I really would like to be on a show here. The only thing pulling me in the other direction is I am not complaining about being able to fly across the world and check out these awesome countries, right? So I'm kind of torn. I definitely, for competition's sake, I definitely want to compete here, you know, not having to fly 24 hours in a, in a, a plane and layovers and all that, flying to the other side of the world while cutting, you know, dieting and cutting and stuff is always good. Um, but the, the like normal regular dude in me, doesn't hate going over there and checking out all these cool places and going to Thailand twice, going to Jakarta. Uh, this last one was Singapore. I was kind of upset. I wasn't able to see the country, but next time. Um, but you know, I, uh, I really obviously, uh, take my career seriously. So we want to do the best for us as far as competition goes. And, uh, you know, having the, the fight here in the States would be phenomenal. And I'm, I'm, I'm all for it for sure. Put me on that card. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, anytime. Have a good day. All right, you too. Thank Bye. you.